Hello everybody, my name is Peter Klapper from the School of Biosciences at the University of Kent in Canterbury and in this video clip I want to talk a little bit about growth kinetics. Very often we find that growth follows a first order reaction. So let's see how this works. Let's assume we have a reaction where we have a compound A is converted into a product B. And this follows, this has a certain rate constant and we can write for the disappearance, for the consumption of A, we can write our rate equation dA over dt equals minus k times a and if indeed it is a first order reaction we can write this as to the power of one so that's a first order reaction and we can very easily uh, figure out uh, an equation for that so we can for example say our final concentration of uh, a our a final equals a initial, that's the starting concentration, times e to the power of minus k times t final minus t initial. Uh, so that's not terribly difficult. Now, what happens with b? So let's write the rate equation for b, db divided by over dt equals, well, let's say it's minus k, is plus k, so we have a positive sign here because we produce b. But how much do we produce b? What should we write in this case? Well, obviously, the production of b this production here of B depends on A. It does not depend on B in itself. It depends on A. And therefore, we have to write K times, again, A to the power of 1. So that is for the production of B. Now, unfortunately, this equation we can't really solve. So we can't do that. We can't really write it in a form like this. That's easily solvable. So let's see how we can, in a way, overcome this problem. Now, let's just simply uh, draw what's happening here. So we have here our time axis. And this would be with the right units, say, minutes or something like that and here we have our a and uh, potentially also our b now for a we start with our initial concentration that's yeah initial concentration and for first order reaction we will see something like this going down now, how would this look for B? Well, at the beginning, we don't have any B. We only have A. So we would not have any, any considerable amount of B. So our B would sit down here. Whereas at the end of the reaction, all of our A has been converted into B. So this would be a typical conversion reaction. And we would, if there is a one-to-one -one ratio, so one molecule of A is converted into one molecule of B, we would probably get something like here at the end of the reaction. So for B, we would see something like that. We would never ever get more than our A initial, so our A initial, that is a sort of our threshold and that would be what we would get with our B. So this would be the curve for B here. Let me do it like that. So what we see is A goes down and B goes up and it reaches the level of 
A initial. So that would be probably we would call that then our B final. But how can we actually figure out how we can calculate that? Well, what we see here is when we when we add up our for a certain time when we add up our a final or a at a certain time point plus b at a certain time point so i say a time point plus b time point when we add them up they will always give us a initial and we can do that, for example, for this point and this point. This gives A initial. We can do that for this point and this point. It also gives us A initial. So we get that for each pair for a, a given time, for A, in, for A at a certain time plus B at a certain time always gives us A initial. Now let's see how we can formulate that. We can say A at a certain time plus b at a certain time equals a initial. It can't get any more. So what we can do is we can now solve this equation and say bt b at a certain time equals a initial minus a at this certain time. And for a at a certain time we can also write a at a certain time equals a initial times e to the power of minus k times t that's the time where we look at this so let's combine these two things and say b at a certain time equals a initial minus a t and for that I write a initial times e to the power of minus k t. Now I can I can uh, factor out a initial and I can write this so my b at a certain time equals a initial times 1 minus e minus k times t. Now let's see whether this uh, equation that we just derived makes in any way sense. So let's say we look at the very beginning of the reaction. So we say t equals 0. And we know uh, from, our, from our graph that a uh, e, our a t, that is the same as our a initial, and b t should be 0 because we haven't produced any b. Now let's see whether uh, this equation gives us the right answer. So we just simply say we put in a zero here for time. So we have a initial times 1 minus e to the power of minus k times 0. Now a to the uh, e to the power of minus k times 0, this would here give us 0. And we have a initial times 1 minus, and e to the power of 0, we can also write this as 1. So we would have a initial times 1 minus 1. And 1 minus 1, of course, is 0. So this gives us 0. 0 times a1 uh, a initial gives us still zero. So our B at the starting point would be zero. And that is exactly what we found when we looked at our graph. Now what would happen if we make T very, very big, is large? So in other words, we would wait for the reaction to last for a long, long time. And what we would see is that AT would probably go to zero and BT would probably be 
close to a initial. That was what our graph said. Now let's see whether this works. And again, we put in the a large number in here. So, so large for t. So what we have in this case is we have bt equals a initial times 1 minus e to the power of minus something large. Something really large. And 1 minus e, so, so this one here, e to the power of minus large is something very small. It goes towards 0. So what we have then is bt equals a initial times 1 minus almost 0. And that gives us 1. So bt, in this case, at the time point t equals a initial. And that is exactly what we see here. So we are quite confident that our equation that we used here is correct. So let me write this down again. When we have a reaction where A is converted into B and we have something along the line of, that's our A, and this here is our B, then we can, and the, the whole reaction follows a first order reaction, we can write A at the time point T equals A initial times, and I should not do it like that. Let me remove this here. A initial E e to the power of minus kt. For b, we can write a initial times 1 minus e to the power of minus kt. So I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching.